Good evening, Rabbi Kasef, Ms. Schrager, our guest speaker, Mrs. Mandy Wiener, members of the South African Board of Jewish Education and the King David School Foundation, principals, honoured guests, teachers, parents, and the class of 2020. We are Josh Pimstein and Anna Kayla Joffe, your deputy head student leaders, and it is an honour for us to be your masters of ceremony this evening. We welcome everyone to our valedictory. What a year 2020 has turned out to be. No one could have predicted in January the footpaths this year would have us running, jogging, walking, crawling and sometimes crying. We have been tested as individuals and as a collective. I've been contemplating this night for quite some time. Our official final go goodbye from King David. It's a disquieting feeling to think that this is it. The mixed emotions of finally completing a 12-year journey and embarking on a new exciting chapter of our lives, juxtaposed le against leaving our familiar, our comfortable, our predictable. There are trees in California over 4,000 years old. The oldest trees alive, Metusila trees. With everything that nature and man has thrown at these trees, Scientists were curious as to how these trees survive. Many suspected that their roots must be hundreds of feet down into the ground. But botanists were surprised to discover that their roots were only a minimal depth of five feet. The secret is that their roots grew horizontally and actually interlocked with the roots of surrounding trees. Forests of trees formed, all with intertwined roots. The intertwined roots of the collective enhance the individual, resulting in a force that no power has ever been able to destroy. At the beginning of grade eight, we planted a tree on Tubishvat, celebrating our school's beautiful tradition. We have grown into the most magnificent tree. Our years at King David have been spent twisting our roots together, forming lifelong friendships and bonds. As we leave the school, our roots strongly intertwined, we collectively form the King David community. Worldwide, this community is strong and proud, and it is a privilege to be a part of it and to contribute to it. We have all had the privilege of receiving an unparalleled education that has changed our lives 
an education that has strengthened our Jewish roots and our connection with the State of Israel. It is Zionism, Judaism, and the State of Israel that form the soul of our very special school. Eitz Chaim He, Lamachazi Kimba. The Torah is a tree of life for those who grasp it. King David has certainly taught all of us the importance of Torah in our lives. Rabbi Kasev has devoted his life to Jewish education. His ability to merge education and Jewish life coherently is so admirable. We thank Rabbi Kasev for his auspicious leadership and his selfless service to the King David schools, and we wish him everything of the best in his future endeavors. I recently came across a video of my Sharonis at which Rabbi Kasev gave an insightful message about how a boy does not cut his hair until the age of three, derived from the law of not eating from the fruits of a tree for the first three years. Rabbi Kasev explained that throughout the Tanakh, there is a deep connection between a human being and a tree. Thank you, Rabbi Kasev, for nurturing and growing so many beautiful trees. It now gives me great pleasure to welcome Rabbi Kasev, outgoing General Director of the South African Board of Jewish Education, to address the matrix. Ms. Schrager, deputies of the school and school leadership, our head and deputy head prefects, Rabbi Sif, heads of schools who are watching, board members, teachers, our guests, guest Mrs. Mandy Wiener, parents, family members, and, and of course, you the matriculants of 2020, who I would like to address with a few words this evening. Clayton Christensen, the well-known lecturer and author from Harvard University, who passed away earlier this year, wrote a profound book called, How Will You Measure Your Life? Using business models which he taught to his students, he applied them such that they could use these models to make better decisions in their life. In the same vein, I would like to take a concept that by now all of you know from mathematics and encourage you to use it not just for simple sums, but to rather apply it to your lives. Life is filled with choices and many tensions. And one of these is the choice as to whether you will be a multiplier or a divider, or as Liz Wiseman refers to it, as a diminisher. There's a wonderful old cartoon by Bill Keen in which a woman approaches another lady who's surrounded by four young children and asks her, how do you divide your love between these children? And she responds, I don't divide it, I multiply it. A mindset of scarcity, stinginess, selfishness, or a belief that you have all the answers leads to people diminishing the value of themselves as well as others. This person is a divider, one who literally sucks the energy out of the space and out of other people, and both they and others will contribute less. It is easy to be negative, to destroy, and to complain. It takes little effort, in fact, to be someone who diminishes things. A mindset of abundance, generosity, kindness, and goodness does exactly the opposite. It's a multiplier. Not only does it breed success, but research indicates that it multiplies the outp outputs of others. And as political scientist James Fowler has shown, it influences others around us to also be generous. These positive behaviors are contagious and send out ripples of goodness. To be a person who adds and in fact <coughs> multiplies takes a conscious effort. Pessimists are found everywhere, but real effort is to be the optimist. It takes what Rav Cook says is a character trait of being a righteous person, 
What is righteousness according to Rav Cook? He says as follows, the righteous do not moan about evil, rather they multiply goodness. They do not moan about those who lack belief, rather they multiply faith. They do not complain about foolishness, rather they multiply wisdom. Just consider the spread of a virus, but rather than its destructive diminishing power, consider what a virus of goodness could achieve in the world. The Torah starts with the letter Bet, the second letter in the Hebrew alphabet, Breshit Bara, rather than an Aleph. And the Midrash wants to know, why didn't the Torah start with an Aleph? And responds that Bet is symbolic of Bracha, blessing. As a book which is meant to be a direction for mankind, the Torah starts with a message that we should all bring blessing to others. Just as Abraham's first command on his journey was Vehiyeh Bracha, be a blessing. And Aleph is what starts the Ten Commandments. Anochi Hashem Elokecha, I'm the Lord your God. Only God's oneness can incorporate an all in abundant kindness. Man's idea of oneness leads to arrogance and egoism. Thus the imperative to bring Bracha to the world is to be a multiplier. Certainly, if you're not good at multiplying, at least try addition. While a diminisher, a divider, brings klala, what we translate as a curse, which is diminishing, darkening, causing contraction. And so even if after acing matric, you forget your maths rules, remember their deeper lesson. And as you go out and make an impact on the world, remember that it is up to us to be multipliers. Be one who strives to bring blessing to others. Your school has equipped you well for this task. And we look forward to watching you as you progress and as your success redounds on the good name of your families and of this wonderful school. And so on behalf of the South African Board of Jewish Education, I wish you much success in your finals and your future. With this being my final address after 17 years, I would like to also wish King David Linksfield High continued success into the future. You as a school have always fostered the academic foundations of our community, together with a love of Yiddishkeit, this land, South Africa, and as well as the land of Israel. There is no doubt in my mind that by equipping so many students with the essentials that they need, you've been multipliers in every respect. May you go from strength to strength. It has been an absolute privilege to work with you over these years. Finally, Meshaga, you've lived for King David Linksfield High, and as the leader of this wonderful school, you've brought endless dedication, passion for education, and a real care for the community and its children. Thank you for bringing so much innovation to the school. It's been a joy to work with you, and I wish you continued success. Rabbi Kasev, thank you for those inspiring and insightful words. Thank you for being a multiplier and for guiding the school so well and devoting your whole career to the well-being of our school. On behalf of all the matrics, we wish you and your family Bahat Lachai in Israel when you make the move. We, the students of King David, have the opportunity to involve ourselves in any school activity. There are so many opportunities to thrive, and we pride ourselves on the breadth of talent of our year. It is with great excitement that I introduce Gam Kialech, performed by Josh Pimstein, Michaela Cohen, and Camilla Cohen. It's been a tough and troubled year where we have missed out on so much. But we've gotten through it, and here we are, nearly at the finish line. Matric 2020. This one is for you.
Josh, Kami, and Mix, that was amazing. Thank you for your breathtaking performance. It is my great honor to welcome our guest speaker this evening. We live in a world filled with fake news. It is so important to tell the truth and get the message out. Mandy Wiener is known as one of those honest journalists. Without any favoritism, she tells the truth as she sees it. She's covered many cases, including the Jackie Celebi case. But Mandy, there's one thing you don't know. My grandfather, Judge Jaffe, was the judge, and he told me this story. <laughs> After a long day in court during the Celebi trial, he would come home from work and be confronted at the door by his wife. She would inquire about his health and his overall mood from the day in a manner that only a Jewish wife can. And he would respond, no, no, I'm okay, thank you. Why do you ask? And her response was, well, Mandy Wiener said you looked sick and grumpy today in court. <laughs> and if Mandy Wiener said it, it must be true. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, I give you Mandy Wiener. That is such a great, great story. You told me something that I did not know. <laughs> so all protocol observed, as they say in government, Mostraga, uh, Rabbi Kesev. But tonight I want to speak to you, the class of 2020. Well, this wasn't what you were expecting, was it? Welcome to the valedictory of the year 2020, where Everything is just not what it should be. It's a wild sugar time. If you had been told a year ago that you'd be attending your valedictory in your bedroom, possibly in your boxer shorts and flip-flops, with a bowl of popcorn and FIFA or Call of Duty on the other screen, away from your friends, you would have called it fake news. But this is the reality of our mad new world. It's important, firstly, to acknowledge your loss. You may feel bereft at your situation. Like so many of us, you've probably been through the Kubler-Ross five stages of grief, denial, this can't be happening to me, no ways. <laughs> Anger, oh, why can't they just have the valedictory at school now, stupid corona? Bargaining, okay, but what if we sit two meters apart and we all wear masks? <laughs> and can we have it outside? Depression, oh, this really does suck, doesn't it? And acceptance. So, Nu, this is it. This is how it's going to be. So let's make the most of this momentous occasion. I know this wasn't the year it was supposed to be. This was the year that you were going to win that rugby trophy. 
and have your best season ever. This was the year you were going to go on cycle tour. This was the year you were going to play the lead in the school play. You were going to go to the matric dance. This was supposed to be your matric year that you had been working 12 years to revel in. Instead, it's been a confusing time of not being allowed to eat roast chicken or buy crop pants, running laps of your garden, family meetings with the president and trying to navigate Microsoft Teams and Zoom and Skype and pushing that mute button repeatedly. Can you hear me? Am I on mute? How many times have you heard that this year? <laughs> I'm sorry, it's not fair. But don't despair. So firstly, let's get some perspective here. According to UNICEF, at least 31% of school children worldwide were not reached by digital and broadcast remote learning programs when schools closed due to the virus. The worst hit area, Southern Africa. UNICEF says millions of these children are likely to be left behind. Half of all children in the region didn't get the online or virtual learning that you received. Many of these will never even return to school again. The pandemic has deepened the divide between the haves and the haves nots. On the contrary, you've had the privilege of learning an entire new skill set over the past six months that will prove to be invaluable to you in your future. In years to come, employers will look at your CVs and single out the class of 2020 because you've survived this period through resilience and creativity. All of those TikTok videos will pay off, you'll see. <laughs> it may be difficult to fully comprehend what an incredible gift you have been given. You've had first-hand exposure to a changing world. You've mastered the art of virtual collaboration while those already in the workforce are still grappling with that mute button or how to position themselves on a virtual screen. You're way ahead when it comes to online learning, and now that there's been a fundamental shift to working, buying, and living online, this will be to your advantage. You've learned to adapt to new technology and new ways of doing things. Again, this will be invaluable when you look at how businesses and entrepreneurs have had to pivot in this pandemic, reinventing themselves in a time of crisis. The pace of change will continue to increase and those of you who are willing and open to change will thrive. You and your generation are uniquely placed to take advantage and leverage this changing world. You'll look back at this experience with humor and amusement and appreciation, even though right now it might not feel like it. This is your time to shine. You'll find many people trying to dish out advice to you, wanting to help you along on your road to adulthood. In a way, everything that's happened to you up until now has been predetermined. Your parents have made most of the big decisions for you. What school you should go to, perhaps what you would study, perhaps even when you would study, or if you would study. Soon, it will all be up to you. You get to decide what to do next, how to do it, and more importantly, what's actually worth doing. It's enormously exciting, but it's also hugely scary. But it's really the start of your life. From now on, all of your successes and all of your failures are yours to bear. There are many, many people who fear the future. I want to tell you that the world that you are going to live in is going to move faster, change quicker, and be more interesting than the one that you grew up in. It's a new world that requires a new way. Some of you will be thinking of leaving, of going to study somewhere else, to look for bigger and better opportunities. It's right that you do that. You must try and be all you can be. You must strive to be the best. It's correct that you do consider pursuing these possibilities. Go and study overseas. Live in a different place. Learn about other societies. See the world. Don't be afraid to open yourself to new experiences and to take risks. As Dr. Seuss says, with your head full of brains and your shoes full of feet, you're too smart to go down any not so good street, and you may not find any you'll want to go down. In that case, of course, you'll head straight out of town. It's open in there, in the wide open air. And once you've done all of that and breathed in the wide open air, I urge you to come back home. South Africa is a place where you can live a challenging and fulfilling life 
and it needs you. Armed with an excellent education and hopefully a burning desire to see your country succeed, you can play a leading role in ensuring we never return to darker days. You might feel despondent about where this country is right now and your prospects of success here. The future may look bleak. But remember, the whole world is a bit of a mess right now. Every country's got its own unique problems. I urge you to be active citizens. Most of you are now old enough to vote. Please, you must cast your ballots and have a say in the trajectory of this nation and who leads it. We have one of the best constitutions in the world and you must always act to protect our democracy. The strength of our active civil society in this country is one of our greatest assets. And this is part of our DNA as Jews. This is the concept of tikkun olam, performing acts of kindness to repair the world. The phrase tikkun olam is found in the Mishnah dating back to the third century, but it's something that's ingrained in all of us. It's synonymous with the notion of social action and the pursuit of social justice. Now, more than ever, we need to ensure that through tzedakah and through chesed, charity and acts of kindness, we work to repair our broken world. And truthfully, you know, I don't need to tell you this. The social justice activism of Gen Z is its best trait. From Greta Thunberg's school strikes for climate change to Donella Fraser, the 17-year-old who filmed the death of George Floyd, to Pakistani activist Mulala Yousafzai, your generation has a strong and fearless social justice barometer. As trends forecaster Dion Chang describes, you use your devices as digital weapons to galvanize your peers and communities to push for change. He says that the COVID-19 pandemic will add to your world perspective and be a defining life event for you, much in the same way that 9-11 and the global financial crisis shaped the millennial generation. It will reaffirm your convictions around climate change and social inequality. You will be stepping into a world just as it's falling apart. Post-COVID, there will not be a return to the old world. You will be the explorers and adventurers of a brand new world. You'll also be perfectly positioned to speak out against the boomers who made a hash of it all in the first place and hold our leaders to account. You'll be ready to speak truth to power. For the past year and a half, I've been working on a book about whistleblowers, which as fate would have it, is launched today. I've sat down with brave and courageous individuals who have risked their own lives and the fate of their families to act in the interests of justice and patriotism. And I spent a lot of time listening to these people tell me about the cost and the sacrifice. But more than anything, I've really been inspired by their stories. From state capture to the abuse of government funds to deeply rooted corruption and corporate malfeasance, they've exposed it all. But they've been treated like pariahs and pushed to the fringes of society. And I've spent many hours thinking about what makes some individuals principled and virtuous enough to speak up while others choose to play it safe and keep quiet and look the other way. Each of, some, each of you have something within you that you were taught by your parents, your school, your community, or your religion that will guide you to make the right decision. Think before you speak up, plan carefully, but you must not stay silent. This is especially true when we see others of a different race or culture or gender or faith being persecuted or abused. Discrimination and racism of any kind should never be acceptable and you shouldn't bear silent witness to this. Stand up and say something. You will be respected for it. Go out into the world with your eyes wide open, knowing that there are many grim things about our society, some of which may deeply affect you. One would think that, as a journalist, I would be pessimistic about the state of the country. Yes, there are many issues that irk and frustrate me, but in fact, the situation is quite the opposite. You see, we're also fortunate enough to witness the very best that South Africa has to offer. For every one bad news story that we report on, there are at least 10 good news stories that happen all around us. Stories of generosity, of spirit, of kindness, of patriotism, 
and of pride in this great nation. And this is a country that needs your brains, and there is a desperate need for people who are the best. All of you here have had an excellent education. You know very well that you are the lucky ones, but it's up to you to pursue excellence wherever you go. In a few years' time, some of you may become doctors at the Charlotte Makeke Johannesburg Academic Hospital, and you must ensure that the care that you offer your patients is the best that they will receive at any hospital in town. If you become a teacher, make sure that every lesson you deliver, be it in Tembisa or Alex or Santon or Bedford View, it's the best you could offer those learners. And yes, if you become a poorly paid journalist, you must be as accurate, independent, and objective as humanly possible. Many of you here today may become entrepreneurs. May you become rich and successful. But whatever you do, please don't forget to give back. Help others to uplift themselves. Yes, making money is great, but don't allow that to dictate your futures. It's worth remembering that it's not the material things that matter most. It's not what you buy, where you live, or how we spend. What really matters most are the types of human beings we are, the fabric of our souls, and how we stay true to that. Never forget the importance of tikkun olam in your futures, of acts of kindness to play your part in repairing the world. Don't look back on these past six months in despair or wallow in the grief of your loss. See it as a great and unique advantage and grab the opportunity. You are so lucky to have been through this experience. But as you will learn in life, you make your own luck. This is a watershed moment in your lives. It's for you to choose how you want to proceed. Choose well, strive for excellence no matter what you do, and make your school proud. Thank you. Thank you, Mrs. Mandy Wiener, for the most inspiring and uplifting speech. You are truly an ambassador for the Jewish community of South Africa. Please accept this gift as a token of our appreciation. Ms. Draga, you've been our principal since our first day of grade eight. You have always made the school an inviting and friendly place a place that we as students feel energized and exuberated to return to day after day, as you saw today. Thank you for guiding us, leading us, and always taking care of us. I know that your impact on us will remain with us long after we leave the school. We know that this year has not been easy for you, with difficult decisions to make in an unfamiliar and rapidly changing environment. We took comfort in knowing your absolute commitment to student well-being. While I think, apologies in advance if I'm incorrect, the music of Dolly Parton is more your generation than our generation. Her quote on leadership is appropriate to all. If your actions create a legacy that inspire others to dream more, to learn more, do more and become more, then you are an excellent leader. Ms. Raga. Thank you, Anna. Uh, I'm not sure who Dolly Parton is. <laughs> Welcome to our first virtual valedictory for a very special, spirited group of matric students that I will never forget. Good evening, Rabbi Kasev, the General Director of the South African Board of Jewish Education, our guest speaker, Mrs. Mandy Wiener, Mr. Elliot Wolf and Mrs. Raylene Trudansky, Directors of the King David Schools Foundation, Mr. Eli Atti and Mr. David Bloch, Chairman and Vice Chairman of the South African Board of Jewish Education, Rabbi Seif, and fellow principals of the King David Schools, honored guests, staff, and parents. Matrix, 
you are individuals that have shown courage, empathy, resilience, and grit, and have taught me more than I thought I needed to learn. This has not been an easy time, but the buzzword of 2020, pivot, and all that entails belongs to you. The word pivot no longer refers to turning around on the spot or the central point on which a mechanism oscillates. It has leapt out of Silicon Valley and into everyday speech. In the world of Facebook and Google, to pivot refers to a startup company deciding to switch direction in their original business model. Successful entrepreneurs are expected to be able to pivot if things do not work out as planned. Yet, we had to pivot, despite having a winning formula and 70 years of success in the field of education, specifically Jewish education. We were forced to pivot despite producing generations of successful and kind community members and leaders. We had to pivot in the face of a global pandemic and a country down, a countrywide lockdown. And pivot, we did. While the high fashion store, uh, fashion store Zara pivoted and switched to making hospital gowns and masks, and Nivea pivoted and switched to making disinfectants, we pivoted to offering a world-class distance schooling to our students in lockdown and isolation when face-to-face -face learning on our cam campus was no longer possible. And our matrix of 2020 pivoted with us. You understood the sacrifices that keeping yourselves and your families safe entailed. You had to give up sports matches, musicals, matric dances, and 18th birthday parties, and join the responsible adult world a year before it was absolutely necessary. This draws comparison to the story of the biblical Noah. During the flood, Noah self-isolates with his family in a wooden ark for 40 days and 40 nights, while the world as it was known drowns in a deluge of rain and rising seas. Something happened to Noah and his family after the period of seclusion and social distancing came to an end. Once the crisis passed and they emerged from their respective shelters, they transformed. He had belief, belief that he should heed the signs and pivot. While others stayed as they were, did not survive the flood, Noah transformed his life and changed the world. Noah and his family, along with quite a number of animals and birds, began the process of repopulating the earth as creation started anew with a covenant marked by a rainbow. More than simply playing a role in God's cosmic drama, Noah became the father of the world. I commend the courageous way in which the Matrix pivoted and focused on getting through the year as best as they could. Please know that the sacrifices that were made were not in vain and that everything that you have done and not done this year has been noted and appreciated. As Socrates, the great philosopher said, the secret of change is to focus all your energy on not fighting the old, but on building the new. I note and appreciate how my loyal and clever crew on this King David Ark were able to build the new and have done everything to keep us afloat and sailing in the right direction. The true north, Rabbi Kasev. Rabbi, you have very few equals. I thank you for always giving of your time to me. I have been blessed to have your wisdom, insights, and measured responses over the last six years, and it is under your guidance that I've been able to pivot. You embody kindness and humility. The sages believe that the true honor comes from, that true honor comes from respecting others in the way in which you do. Hillel, one of our sages himself, was known for never losing his temper and for his great humility. 
a famous saying in Pekea Vot, observes that the, there are three traits that characterize followers of Abraham. A good eye or a generous disposition, a humble spirit, and an undemanding soul. I shall miss you and your family. You have created something so special, and wherever your journey takes you to the promised land and beyond, I know that you will be a blessing to those around you, and I thank you. Tom Johnson, our navigator and first mate. When looking up the characteristics of a good sailor, it said, sailors need to have physical strength and dexterity along with mechanical skills. You must have a stable nature and always put the team first and lead by example. Tom, you embody all of these traits and you certainly have been the best mate I could have wished for. Thank you for your valued friendship, your professionalism, and your untiring commitment you have given to me over the year. To Mazal Sachs, you continue to ep epitomize the ethos of the school. Even through these turbulent times, you have been the anchor and backbone of the school. You have given me strength with your unbelievability, with your unbelievable ability to see things always with a unique perspe uh, perspective and positivity. Your untiring commitment and dedication to the school as a whole, and in particular in fostering and maintaining the Jewish and Zionistic principles of the school, and ensuring that this does not go adrift, is greatly valued and appreciated. Thank you to Bev Bauer for all your hard work and support that you have given to me over the year, and to the Matrix. Your commitment and professionalism is highly appreciated. To Dina Angelo, Dina, I know you are a wonderful dancer and you have certainly used your skills to pivot, then pivot, and then pivot again. And just as we thought that we were finding dry land, you were forced to pivot again. We needed someone that had hand, who had all hands on deck. Thank you for everything that you have done to the academic, for the academic side of the school. school. I owe all the directors a debt of gratitude for your hard work as able-bodied seamen seeing to the overall running of the school. To Jocelyn Angel, Manette Jacobson, Ruth Johnson, Taryn Lazarus, Bev Miller, Michelle Naidu, Kabashni Pillar, Justine Sandler, Andrea Shlom, Rian Filion, I thank each and every one of you. To Rabbi Renan for your contribution and your ongoing contribution to Jewish life at King David. To Kirsty Forsman, thank you for your contribution to a very short but successful first term of sport. To the key teachers of King David High School, Lingsfield, a staff too big to name individually, but a crew that is made up of individual sailors who each play their role to perfection. Whether the stern, the bow, the port side, or starboard, you, you each row in a synchronicity that allows the ship to keep afloat and to reach the point, to reach the port. You each bring your own individual skills and talents and educate the students in your own special way. And you are the mainstay of our school. To Meryl Malkin and the counseling department, Karen Bachrach, Karen Horowitz, and Lisa Klotz, Thank you for your enormous investment in the well-being of the students of King David. You are the lighthouse with the beacon of light shining the way home. Thank you for being the safe space for all the staff, students, and parents when there is a feeling of being all at sea. Your warmth and care is very much appreciate, appreciated. To my PA Bev Rosenfeld, it is difficult to express my gratitude for all that you do to me and for the school at large. If I was to choose someone to accompany me during these difficult times, I could not think of anyone I would trust more than you. You have staved off all the dangers, shown calmness even when I felt I was drowning, and helped me navigate to calmer waters. Your commitment and loyalty to me and to the school is remarkable. Thank you for everything that you do. To the admin staff, Debbie Jacobs, Debbie Freeman, 
Andrea Kaplan and Tracy Schwartz. I thank you for everything that you do behind, for behind the scenes. To our bursa Karen Beavers, thank you for your expertise and sound financial advice. We'll change your title from bursa to Persa as the person responsible for keeping the ship afloat in terms of finances, supply, and administration. To Jody Starkovitz, for all your hours that you devote to such a variety of school activities, you have been forced to pivot by ensuring all our marketing was different online, and you have done so with such excellence. You have been the boat swain of the school, continuing to profile the school with such love and passion, and I am indebted to you for everything you do and for the generous spirit in, that you, in, in the way that you always display. A big thank you to our PTA chair, Mr. Sean Jammy, and your group of devoted parents, to our support staff, Tembi Sanmali, Freddie Parlow, Bongi Ngunzani, Jane Moore, and Mandla Mapufu. Thank you to Sue DeSantos, Norman Sat Sati, Cabela Manjani, and all members of the maintenance transport teams for all that you do for the school. And a very special thanks to you, Bev, for all your ultra-efficient organization of tonight's valedictory service and being willing to pivot our valedictory service. And then finally, to Nick Wilcox and to the Salt Boys for all the technology and all the arrangements in making tonight a possibility. In the novel studied by the Matrix this year, The Dream House, Craig Higginson explores transformation in his characters, Patricia and Look Smart. He uses these characters to comment on transformation in the greater South African context. Higginson suggests that when, face, when one faces the pain of the past, the way in which Look Smart and Patricia are forced to do, only then can healing begin. Your past six months have been painful in a number of ways, but you have all pivoted. You have transformed, and like the characters in the novel, you have managed to face this pain and not turn away from it. And in doing that, you can begin to heal, and I quote, there is an altogether different way of viewing the world as an inexhaustible source of renewal and growth. And if you are able to have an altogether different way of viewing the world, your future can be determined by your attitude. As R. Roy T. Bennett says in the book, The Light in the Heart, you cannot control what happens to you, but you can control the way you think about all the events. You always have a choice. You can choose to face them with a positive mental attitude. Our experiences give us perspective and meaning and an opportunity to grow into our own unique selves. It is therefore significant that you have been the group that have embraced the theme La Chantelva. You are the group that understood that if you cannot be kind, be quiet. I know that the popular singer Taylor Swift has often been the soundtrack to one's teenage years. And considering that she has a song for almost every single event and feeling in life, I'm going to quote her track, You Need to Calm Down When She Sings. I ain't trying to mess with your self-expression, but I've learned a lesson that stressing and obsessing about somebody else is no fun. The moral of the song relates to the value of love and acceptance. We can all learn something from those around us if we remain non-judgmental and open. The Rebbe Menachem Mendel Schneerson said, our only way forward should be to have compassion without cause and to care for each other because the other exists. Every year, I marvel at the success stories that our matrix have written over their five years at school. And to quote another Taylor Swift track, Long Live, when she sings, will you take a moment, promise me this, that you'll stand by me forever. She talks about celebrating all the good things that happens when you least expect it. And to look back on the memories with your close friends with pure happiness. When you entered high school five years ago, you opened a blank page in your book. The book is now filled with highs and lows, laughters and tears, freedom and lockdown. 
but most importantly, you have filled your blank pages with personal success stories. My prayer for you, Matrix, is that you will build on the foundations of your Jewish education and that they will be the essence of who you are and who you become. I hope that you will live lives filled with humility, compassion, and courage, and always have hearts full of love and chesed among many, other, many of your other great qualities. Be so busy loving your life that you have no time for hate, regret, or fear. Follow your dreams, be brave, and remember to live in hope and with love. Jonas Salk, the American virologist who developed one of the first successful polio vaccines, sums it up when he said, hope lies in dreams, in imagination, and in the courage of those who dare to make their dreams into a reality. Our reality may not be different, um, I'm sorry, our reality may now be different, but your dreams can be the same. Your success is not measured in distinctions. Your success in me is measured in the meeting of potential, in fulfilled dreams and wishes that come true. And this year, your success is no different. I'd like to end with the words of Winston Churchill who said, success is not final and failure is not fatal. It is the courage to continue that counts and continue you do with courage. You all inspire me. You are my success. And I wish you all well and bahatslacha. Thank you, Ms. Raga, for your leadership through our five years of high school. Your humility, commitment, and dedication to King David High School Linksfield is remarkable. Thank you for always having an open door where students can voice their opinions and share their thoughts. King David has afforded every student the opportunity to not only grow in the, in the classroom, but also on the sports field. My fondest and proudest moments of my schooling career will be those many hours spent representing the school in sport. Sport unites the school with a common purpose and a common goal. And very often, through war cries, spirit, and song. I introduce your song, sung by Gabby Moraine, Jenna Marcus, and Jesse Klein. It's a little bit funny, this feeling inside. I'm not one of those who can easily hide. I don't have much money, but boy, if I did, I'd buy a big house where we both could live. So excuse me for getting, but these things I do. And you can tell 
Thank you, Jesse, Gabby, and Jenna, for your beautiful performance. It is never easy to say thank you and goodbye to the people who we look up to most. And for some of us, it really is just a, I'll see you in the car later. But here it goes to the previous head student leaders of 2019-2020. Dan. One thing I really admire about you, that you have been able to keep constant over the past year, is your absolute humility. You always show such compassion, and you have this ability to inspire those around you with such dedication and charisma. You have this innate ability to empathize and uplift the underdog, which is something that I truly aspire to put into action over the next year. I wish you everything that you wish yourself for the future. Thank you, and you'll be missed. Aaron, I feel so incredibly lucky to have someone in my life who not only teaches, grows, guides, and inspires me every day, but who also supports me, sticks by my side, and gives me advice whenever I need it. Not only have you left big shoes for me to fill, but you've literally left all your shoes in my room. I'm not going to ask you another time to remove them before I adopt them as my own. Eh, I love you immeasurably, and I can't wait to be by your side celebrating all of your achievements in life. So, without further ado, it is our greatest privilege to welcome onto the stage Erin Atty and Daniel Klaas. Good evening, Rabbi Kasef Mishraga, members of the South African Board of Jewish Education and the King David Schools Foundation, our distinguished guest speaker, Mandy Wiener, teachers, oh, parents, and most importantly, the matric class of 2020. I recall so clearly our last day of grade eight orientation when our classes were announced and being so scared that Dean Nathan, who I have known since grade one, would be in my class and continually get me into trouble. Five years later, I am still so scared of him getting me into trouble. I remember meeting Camilla and Eden and thinking to myself, whoa, how cool are these girls? And five years later, I stand here still thinking, whoa, how cool are these girls? I also remember seeing the size of a fellow grade eight, Josh Pimstein, and thinking, geez, how is the size of this oak's arms? <laughs> and five years later, I still think, geez, how is the size of this oak's arms? While the COVID pandemic has caused a sense of lost opportunities, missed experiences, and foregone occasions, it seems appropriate to take guidance from Winston Churchill who said, never let a good crisis go to waste. While one would never wish a crisis of this magnitude on the world, it is the people's reactions and responses to this crisis about which I would like to talk this evening. What is fascinating to me is that all four lessons that I have learned from people's reactions are in fact lessons taught right here at school in the King David classrooms over the last 12 years. It seems ironic that the pandemic has made me realize what I actually already knew. The first lesson is about the importance of community and concern for others. While the support provided by broader communal organizations have been both well documented and articulated, it is more specifically our school about which I would like to talk. 
the selfless acts and kindness of so many of our contemporaries to help and assist others will forever remain etched in my mind. Whether it was collections by the outreach committee or the Amor initiative to make sandwiches, the selfless caring for others was so evident during these times as we realized that while our reality was difficult, it dwarfed in comparison to the challenges being faced by others. How true are the words of our sage Hillel when he noted, Im anila atzmi, ma ani. If I am for myself alone, then what am I? While we have lost out on cultural activities and sports matches, of time spent in the salt box, of loud music being pumped out of carpools with friends, of jaws and banter after assemblies each week, the second lesson imparted by the pandemic is the importance and significance of relationships during trying times. Matric 2020, this year has not been easy on us. It has been a year of trials and unprecedented challenges. Yet the friendships and bonds we have developed over our years together have seen us through these difficult times. Our ability to show and share our vulnerabilities with one another has only been strengthened during the pandemic. The third lesson imparted on us by the, by the pandemic is that of patience, perseverance, resilience, and grit. In March this year, no one would have thought it possible to complete the syllabus and our matric academic year. But against all odds, we are ready and we are as ever prepared as any other previous year. The matric response to this is hardly unexpected because perseverance is inbuilt in our genes. It is intrinsic to being a Jew. As we have learned all our lives, the Jewish people have faced a disproportionate amount of persecution. Yet the Jewish flame never wavers, no matter what challenges we face. We persevere through it all. This is evidenced with the atrocity of the Holocaust, where despite one third of the Jewish population of the world being exterminated, just three years later, we were able to establish a Jewish state. We were taught that the Jewish flame will never be extinguished, even in the face of hatred. But learning and understanding about our history as a persecuted people means we have a responsibility to protect and support those who face modern day discrimination. Be it women and children affected by gender-based violence in South Africa, those battling with mental illnesses, especially during these times of isolation, the lack of acceptance towards the LGBTQ plus community and the long-standing racial prejudice towards people. The fourth lesson that I have taken out of this year is that of gratitude for what I have. While our online lessons may have occasionally been interrupted by lagging connections, sorry guys, my microphone must have been on mute. Mr. Sander complaining with tricks. Hello, can you hear me? Or begging Mr. Shevach to please just show us your dog, Trixie, sir. It is hard to deny the fact that the privilege afforded to us of having online lessons is something not available to most South African learners. The disparity that exists between ourselves and the less fortunate has been amplified during these tough times. How grateful we should be for the opportunities afforded to us through our attendance at King David. The Hebrew word for Jews, Yehudim, shares the same root or shoresh as the word hodaya, gratitude. From grade one, we were taught that the first words we should say daily on awakening is modeh ani, grateful am I. While linguistically, the subject should precede the verb, an exception is made in this declaration as the act of gratitude should precede the individual. My final thought comes from the Latin phrase, carpe diem, seize the day. It is also highlighted in our learnings of Pirkei Avot. If not now, then when? The teaching speaks about seizing the moment and recognizing an opportunity 
when it comes your way. Had we known that 2019 would be the last time we saw Josh, Shauli and Dean, along with the matric rugby boys play for the school, we may have supported more vociferously. Had we known that Michal, Demi and Danielle would not play another netball game for the school after 2019, we may have cheered and watched more intently. Had we known that 2019 would be the last time to hear our peers' angelic voices, we may have stood in ovation with a more thunderous applause. Had we known that the actors and actresses would have no opportunity to exhibit their excellence in performing arts in 2020, we would have been more supportive and engaging of their craft. My final wish for you, my classmates and my friends, is that you embrace these four lessons that COVID has taught us. Give back to your community and be your best. Live a life of integrity, honor, gratitude, and resilience. Be a voice for those who cannot be heard. Persevere, be patient, and seize every opportunity that comes your way. Thank you. Good evening, Rabbi Kasev, Ms. Shraga, members of the South African Board of Jewish Education and the King David Schools Foundation, our distinguished guest speaker, Mandy Wiener, teachers, parents, and most importantly, the matric class of 2020. There's a reason that the windshield of a car is much bigger than its rear view mirror. What is in front of us is much greater than what lies behind us. As we each enter the driver's seats of our adult lives, we leave behind our school days at King David High School, Linksfield. However, it is in my experience that I've seen and observed the sheer size and greatness of each of our individual schooling careers, from everything academic to everything cultural and everything in between. We have each excelled in our own unique way. With mixed emotions, it is our 12 years of schooling and the time together as the King David matric class of 2020 that you and I see in each of our rearview mirrors. Now, before we can even start to describe the magnitude and brightness of our futures that lie ahead of us, we must fully immerse, reflect, and reminisce on our special King David years together. Like any perfect literary essay begins, in the novel, our matric journey. Why us, COVID? Why us? <laughs> By the schnard matrix of 2020, I agree that we have had a tough year. However, our strength, positivity, perseverance, and hope has allowed us to be inscribed in the history books of our school. For some of us, our journey began in primary school or even play school. However, our combined school story began in a one in a million way. Yes. I just said that, a one in a million way. For some of us, uh, on the way to our grade eight orientation, as I eagerly sat on the school bus, I could have never imagined that the group who had embarked on the same journey as me would become such an integral part of my life. The idea of being ourselves and creating our own unique journeys throughout high school has stuck with me since orientation. And now, as we set our eyes on a sea view of IEB final papers, we are lucky to view one another as a cloud of yellow butterflies from which we derive great motivation and inspiration. Orientation built the foundation of our fruitful and fertile road to high school success. And it prevented us from experiencing Patricia's pain of a failed Dwalani farm that is built on rock. We are each one in a minion. To me, this means that we each have a unique purpose to fulfill in our lifetimes. At King David, we have been privileged to gain a rich understanding of Judaism, which has developed and strengthened our Jewish identities. I recently came across a powerful message from the book of Breshit. At the end of each day of creation, Hashem proclaims that what he has created is tov, good. However, at the end of the sixth day, when man was created, Hashem does not call his creation of man good. 
intuitively, we would all ask the question, why was man's creation not good? We learn that the description of good implies completion. For example, only once Hashem created the light and darkness did he call the light good. This definition of good suggests that man is incomplete. We are not yet fully accomplished beings. For us in this world, we are each created with a unique purpose, and it is through fulfilling each of our own unique purposes that we will elevate ourselves and be promoted to a state of completion and ultimate goodness in the eyes of Hashem. Only now am I beginning to understand the value of our grade eight motto. We are one in a minion. It is so fitting that our special matric group possess such potential and possibility. How do I put it? An infinite variety. We have such diversity across the 151 students in our grade. This fact has contributed to the impact and legacy that we will leave on our school. As our days of jamming serious tunes on the speakers at breaks come to an end, and as we put the days of Dean's dancing for Mrs. Jacobson behind us, I can only admire our grade's eagerness to strive, to seek, to find, and not to yield, just as our friend Ulysses once did. I want to take you back to Encounter, the last time our entire grade was seated in a single room together. I vividly recall the flickering of that single candle that was passed around through each of our hands. There was, there was a silence that vo evoked emotion. When the candlelight moved in a way as to join all of us through a streak of magnificent golden light, I made an actual note on my phone to mention this powerful moment in our grade's existence at Valedictory. Now, through some synesthesia, I hope that I have brought back this instance where our matric group chose to accept one another and embrace our difference. Each of us took the opportunity to compliment and add our own voice to the King David High School Lingsfield matric group of 2020. Speaking of own voice, what would one of my speeches be without the age old question? Wait for it. This is for every science student, past or present, to answer with some selective breeding hybrid vigor. Here goes, V squared equals. Now that each of you have screened U squared plus a two AS at your computer or cell phone screens, I must accelerate in the positive direction back to my first sentence. There's a really good reason that a car's windshield is way bigger than its rear view mirror. The few instances of our grade's closeness and brilliance that I've shared tonight only touch the tip of our matric classes in school greatness. Our days as scholars at King David High School Linksfield are almost over, but we leave behind in our own rear view mirrors an immeasurable legacy. To all of you, my friends, this matric class of 2020, it is my firm belief that each of our individual lives are without a doubt heading in a direction of success, happiness, and infinite possibilities that far outweighs the merits of our formidable pasts. It is my sincere privilege to wish each of you a life in which your rear view mirrors reflect tremendous growth in kindness, compassion, and confidence. And through this, may each of our lives be blessed to have windshields that are infinitely larger than our rear view mirrors. Alfred North Whitehead so aptly put it when he said, no one who achieves success does so without acknowledging the help of others. The wise and confident acknowledge this help with gratitude. To the people who have ensured our success and guided us each step of the way, this evening would not be complete without expressing our endless gratitude to you all. Ms. Schrager, Thank you for the opportunity you gave both of us to lead. These past five years were made to be what they were because of your ongoing dedication and interest into every student. Thank you for your unwavering support. To the executive body of the school, Mr. Johnson, by cleaning our glasses throughout the year, you have shown the importance of being disciplined and having self-control. Thank you. Morris Sachs, 
אנחנו מעריכים את כל האנרגיה ואת כל התמיכה שלך. הדלקת בנו אהבה בלי גבולות לישראל. תודה רבה. מיס באואר, We are so grateful for your calm composure and assistance with all matters inside and outside the classroom. Thank you. To our incredibly devoted matric teachers, through the hardest year, you have remained committed to us and optimistic in ensuring that all matters, both inside and outside the classroom, were looked after. Thank you for your warmth in literally welcoming us into your kitchens, lounges, and dining rooms, and for your endless dedication, input, love, and motivation, encouraging us to soar both academically and as people. Thank you for inspiring us daily. To the entire King David High School Linksfield staff, thank you for your energy and motivation. We are so grateful to each of you. A sincere thank you to the security staff, ground staff, and bus drivers for looking after us for the last 12 years, for ensuring the school has always been a beautifully maintained environment, and for schlepping us to and from every day of the week. Anna and Josh, you each bring a unique approach to leadership, and we feel so privileged to have shared this journey with you. Thank you for everything. To the student leader group, thank you for all your hard work throughout the year. To our greatest supporters, our parents, thank you for being our backbones throughout every challenge and success this past year. Thank you does not even begin to put into words our appreciation for everything. We love you with all our heart. Dan, I have loved working alongside you this past year. Thank you for teaching me to find the strength in everyone and utilize their ability for good. Thank you for supporting me each step of the way. Erin, you truly epitomize the definition of an Aishid Chayil who possesses a warm and kind heart. Thank you for supporting and believing in me always. I adore you. Most importantly, to the matrix of 2020. We can't always choose the music life plays for us, but we can choose how we dance to it. For the last time ever, good evening, King David. And good evening, matric 2020. And Dan, it's been an absolute honor for Anne and myself to work alongside you this year. Thank you both for your selfless dedication to the school and ensuring that we accept one another and embrace our difference. Ryder Carroll said, no matter how bleak or menacing a situation may appear, it does not entirely own us. It can't take away our freedom to respond, our power to take action. Matrix of 2020, we were, we were born the year in the midst of the 9-11 atrocities and matriculating in the middle of a devastating pandemic. However, we have not let this define us. We have not let this shape our identity as a group and we have not let this stop our flame from burning with passion, pride and purpose. We have embodied the epitome of resilience. Now, whether or not we are going to win any prizes, whether or not our best days lie ahead of us or behind us, and irrespective of our academic prowess, our sporting talent, our religious affiliation, or our sexual orientation, we will always be bound by the fact that we are King David High School Linksfield's class of 2020. We must always be there for each other, just like the Methuselah trees. Our collective well-being depends on how we treat one another. We wish each and every one of you the best of luck for your final exams. Ms. Raga, would you please come up to begin the prize-giving ceremony?
now we get to the part, that, the reason that we really are here. Um, first of all, I'd like to say to the matrix that um, our academic results look really promising and bode well for the end of the year. And so I really do want to pay tribute to the matric teachers and to the students really for an outstanding job done. I'm going to start with the academic medals and um, I'll go through the names. The bronze medals, which is an academic achievement for students that achieved 74.5% to 79.4%. Jesse Bondi, Camilla Cohen, Daniel Engelberg, Dina Gadden, Brad Gottschalk, Samantha Gottschalk, Shedi Hadar, Liron Horowitz, Anna Kayla Joffe, Nikita Crost, Sarah Lessig, Michaela Levick, Samuel Marin, Lior Mayer, Sheer Mayeri, David Michaels, Joshua Norman, Lior Novick, Daniel Rome, Hannah Rome, Michal Saki, Shai Siegel, Danielle Schaefer, Shane Sher, Shane Silverman, Kayla Walt, and Joshua Walensky. Silver medals for academic excellence and achieving an aggregate between 79.5 and 84.4. Yonatan Asayag, Aaron Atti, Kiara Burr, Michaela Cohen, Danny Frankel, David Gosher, Demi Gruskin, Julian Katz, Maya Katzen, Kayla Kotzen, Elisheva Kruger, Dylan Cumming, Gabby Moraine, Bianca Rosen, Ashley Smith, Sarah Schwartz and Gilla Tarog. And the award of gold medal, which is academic honors for students that achieved an aggregate from 84.5 and above. Shaul Asayag, Rotem Barashi, Montana Boone, Gabrielle Bergen, Daniel Klaas, Gabriel Diamond, Montana D Goldberg, Shana Goss, Tana Herson, Gabriel Hershowitz, James Hershowitz, Tyler Kahn, Noah Kalner, Gina Levy, Daniel Lurie, Josh Pimstein, Leora Porter, Carly Rachelson, and Dina Siegel. <laughs> Mazal tov to all of you. And now I'm going to, to the awards. Um, all the trophies will be accompanied by, with certificates and all the award winners are invited tomorrow between four and five to join us. We have an opportunity for students that are not here this evening to congratulate you personally and to give you your trophies and certificates. The Gary Block Trophy for exemplary commitment to King David Linksfield goes to Joshua Pimstein. The Wendy Mason Trophy for service and commitment, James Hershowitz. The Nadine Rosen Trophy for service to Noah Blau. The Richardson Family Trophy for Selfless Commitment, Danny Frankel. The Arnold Giver Trophy for Versatile Commitment and Selfless Example, Michaela Cohen. The Lee Isaacson Trophy for Commendable Progress, Jared Kramer. The Ruskin Trophy for Scholastic Progress, Elijah Marin. The Arnie Altshuler Trophy for Personal and Academic Growth, David Gosher. The Ethel and Minnie Burson Award and Lipman Family Trophy for the Top Girl Matriculant, Leora Porter. The Abraham 
and Nathan Burson Award and Lipman Brothers Trophy for the top boy matriculant, Daniel Class. The Norman signed the prize for genuine intellectual curiosity, Brad Gottschalk and Daniel Rome. The Cheryl Benjamin Prize for Special Aptitude in Mathematics, Gabriel Diamond. The Smith Family Trophy for AP Mathematics, Daniel Class. The Levine Trophy for Mathematics, Daniel Class. The Sylvia Bloch Trophy for Exceptional Ability in Mathematics. It's a shared award between Gabriel Hershevitz, Jed Nesbitt, and Joshua Pimstein. The Bernie Aronofsky Award and the Silverman Family Trophy for Physical Sciences, Daniel Class. The Standard Bank Trophy for Linguistic Ability in Afrikaans, English, and Hebrew, Josh Pimstein. The Ashley Subal Trophy for Creative Literary Talent, Gina Levy and Tanya Perrell. The David Subal Trophy for Oratory Excellence, Michaela Cohen. The Maluvu Trophy for Isuzulu, Maya Katzen. The Maluvu Trophy for Progress in Isizulu, Sarah Lessig. The Andrea Shapiro Trophy for Afrikaans, Gabriel Hershevitz. The Jackie Sack Floating Trophy for Progress in Afrikaans, Jonathan Erdang. The Norman Sander Award and the Tamara Lewis Trophy for Excellence in English, Daniel Class and Leora Porter. The Marilyn Ch Chazen Trophy for Exceptional Progress in English, David Gosher. The Jackie Sack Floating Trophy for Progress in English, Noah Blau and Andy Milwitzki. And the Hyman Family Trophy for AP English to Joshua Walensky. The Lana Lapidus Trophy for real commitment to Hebrew and general dedication to King David, Aaron Atti. The Mazal Sachs Trophy for Exceptional Achievement in Hebrew, Gabriella Moraine. The Porter Trophy for Excellence in Hebrew, Montana Goldberg. The Pulsar Family Trophy, trophy for Outstanding Progress in Hebrew, Raf Cumming. The Blasovsky Award and the Glazer Family Trophy for the student has shown general interest in and love of Hebrew, Daniel Class. <laughs> the Carmen Lewis Trophy for a sincere devotion to the Hebrew language and the state of Israel, Josh Pimstein. The Bainish Trophy for Outstanding Commitment to Judaism, Shah Siegel. <laughs> the 
the Ellis Trophy for Excellence in Zionistic Endeavor, Joshua Pimstein. The Rabbi Goss Trophy for Upholding the Jewish Ethos of the School, Joshua Pimstein and Liron Horowitz. The Ronnie Mink Trophy for Commitment to Jewish Life of King David, Aaron Atti. The Accounting Trophy for the Top Achiever, Joel Asayag. The Shy Lipman Trophy for Business Studies, Kiara Burr. The Michelle Kopilovitz Trophy for Exceptional Business Studies Acumen, James Hershowitz and Joshua Kress. The Milner and Shlom Consumer Studies Prize, Tana Herson. The Milner Trophy for Consumer Studies in the practical um, side, Taylor J. Barron and Tyler Kahn. The David Edelson Trophy, David Edelson Trophy for Cat Eden Cohen. Leslie Friedman Trophy for Dramatic Arts Theory, Dina Siegel. The Kaftoff Trophy for Dramatic Arts, Practical, Sarah Schwartz. The Schmuckler Trophy for Continuous Involvement and Contribution to Performing Arts, Sarah Schwartz. The Tom Johnson Trophy for Outstanding Interest in Geography, a shared award between Shaul Asayag and Liron Horowitz. The Lewis Girls Trophy for a genuine love of and interest in history, a shared award between Shana Goss, Brad Gottschalk, and James Hershowitz. The Warren Mendelow Trophy for an inquiring historical mind, Joshua Norman and Bianca Rosen. The Anthony Meissen Award and the Angel Trophy for History, Noah Kellner. The Ort Trophy for the IT Prec, Elijah Marin. The David Edelstein Trophy for IT, Gabriel Hershowitz. The Life Orientation Award to Daniel Lurie. The Rene Friedman Trophy for a genuine interest in, bio in biological sciences, shared award between Daniel Klaas and Samuel Marin. The Inga Pizer Award and the Eisenberg Family Trophy for Life Sciences, Daniel Klaas and Tyler Kahn. <laughs> Mathematical Literacy Award, Brandon Cotton. <laughs> the Best Performer Music Award to Josh Pimstein. Academic Music Award, Leora Porter. <laughs> Exemplary Contribution to Music at King David, Josh Pimstein and Leora Porter. <laughs> the Burzix Trophy for Tourism to Jared Kramer.
the Eisenberg Family Trophy for Visual Arts, the theory, Montana Goldberg, Sarah Lessig, and Gina Levy. The Nick Saro Trophy for Outstanding Art Practical, Samantha Gottschalk and Gina Levy. <laughs> Outstanding Contribution to Cultural Activities, Maya Katzen and Joshua Walensky. <laughs> the Jared Mo Morris Trophy for all-round contribution to the cultural life of King David Lingsfield, Tanti Peril. <laughs> the Morris Egdis Trophy for social awareness to Brad Gottschalk and Anna Kayla Joffe. <laughs> the Mo Ronnie Mink Trophy for tolerance and understanding of one's fellow man Kayla Cotson and Leora Porter. <laughs> the Witso Outreach Award and the Hannah Bloch Trophy for Outreach to Michaela Cohen and Anna Kayla Joffe. <laughs> the Gary Block Sound and Lighting Trophy, which was donated by Jevin and Chad Binder, to Noah Blau, Blau, Danny Frankel, and Brandon Cotton. <laughs> the Mark Josephson, Josephson Trophy for First Aid and Civic Responsibility, James Hershevitz. The Michaels Brothers Trophy for an achievement bringing credit to King David High School, and this year we have two recipients. The first recipient is Rafael Cumming, Raf Cumming. Raf excelled in several open water swimming events. He received his Central Gauteng Aquatics Colors and was selected by the Central Gauteng Aquatics Open um, Water Committee to compete at the South African Open Water, water, Nas open water Nationals, where he finished 15th out of a hundred swimmers. The second recipient is Josh Pimstein. Josh was selected for the open side flank for the Golden Lions under 16 rugby team in 2018 and was awarded the team's best forward award for the interprovincial tournament. In 2019, he played in the Lions Under 18 Academic 15, te Academic, um, 15 team at the Craven Week and in the Lions IPT Under 18. This year, Josh was selected for the Lions High Performance Training Squad from which the Craven Week team was going to be selected. There were times when Joshua had to juggle games and Chagim and, Sh and Shabbat, but always made arrangements to stay overnight at accommodation close to the playing venue. This dedication to both his heritage and the game deeply impressed his teammates and team managers and so certainly brought great credit to his parents and the school. The Elliot Wolf Head Student Leaders Prize to Aaron and Daniel. The late Archie Sandler Trophy for Sportsman of the Year, which was a little bit difficult to decide, seeing as the sporting calendar came to an abrupt stop. So we have awarded the sportsman and who we've judged as to being consistently playing for the sport, uh, for the school in various different um, sporting um, disciplines. Um, and so it is of great pleasure that I announce our three sportsmen of their schooling career, Gavi Bergen, Raf Cumming, and Josh Pimstein. <laughs> the same decision had to be made when it came to the girls, and so the recipients of this award for their contribution to sport over the last four and a bit years 
the Angel Family Trophy for the Sports Women of the Year, Anna Joffe, Kayla Cotlin, and Ashley Smith. The Hirschman Trophy for exemplary contribution to school life, boys, Daniel Class. The Don and Stacey Jankilovitz Trophy for exemplary contribution to school life, Anna Kayla Joffe. The Labe Copens Trophy for outstanding ser service as a student leader, Anna Kayla Joffe. I just want to make a um, comment that it's an outstanding award. This is chosen by the student leaders themselves. This is not chosen by members of staff, um, but by the student leaders. So, mazal tov for that award. The Lewis Trophy for the best all-rounder, the girls, Erin Atti and Montana Goldberg. <laughs> the Gary Shapiro Trophy for the best all-rounder, Josh Pimstein. <laughs> the second last award, which is the Abe, Abe Grabman Good Fellowship Trophy, this is an award that is chosen by the matric group themselves. It is voted on for somebody that epitomizes everything that the school stands for. Somebody that is, um, in, embodies the Jewish values, that has, is, is, a, is a wonderful contributor to, to all aspects of the school. Somebody that is a real mensch. And I'm pleased to announce the award this year goes to Danielle Ogus. And then finally, a principal's award, which is always at my discretion, to a student who I believe that I have seen unbelievable growth in, in the last five years. I must admit that one of the reasons I have chosen this student is that he does support Man United, um, and that probably would have swayed me. But my award goes to Lior Bernstein, somebody that has been absolutely committed to King David High School, he embodies the Jewish values, his commitment to sport. He is a humble young man, well-mannered, loved by his peers and teachers. And I think that Lior is a worthy recipient of this award, Mazal Tov. Before I conclude, I just want to thank again the SALT team for a seamless, which I think and I hope that this is how it's been received at home. To you, Mr. Wilcox, um, I, I did threaten you with your life, but um, I don't think that was a reason for you just to have got it right. To Meryl Malkin, to Jody Starkovitz, to SALT a million times over, for all members of staff who worked behind the scenes to ensure the smooth running of this very extraordinary evening. I'd like to thank you, Mandy, personally, for being here this evening. I loved your message. To you, Rabbi Kosev, for everything that you have done for the King David Schools. To my executive and all the directors. And just a, re a reminder, please, for all those students that have been given awards tonight, I don't, I think the medals aren't ready yet, but there are certificates, am I correct? So we would love to see you all here between four and five tomorrow, where you'll have an opportunity to be given your awards by the various HODs. I wish you all an easy fast, a beautiful, beautiful Heritage Day tomorrow. I thank you for your attendance this evening, and I wish you all well. Thank you.